Greetings. This is Arvette McLean with Speak, the Universe Listens. New ways to view age-old challenges. Change your thoughts, change your life. Step into the bigness of you. Y'all ever been in a situation where, uh, or just in your life where you've been mad at a person because of something they said to you, maybe? Like, let's just use that, something they said to you. And you find out later, that's not what even, even what they said or what they was meaning to <laughs> say to you. But this whole entire time, you've been holding this grudge on them. Mm. Like, I don't like them, I don't fool with them, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. And it was really just a quick, like, it could have been shifted that quick. If, you know, just from, a, it, it was just a misunderstanding that fast. But you done held this grudge that long, you know. So that just brought me to the topic of holding grudges and how they can affect us internally holding on to these things and a lot of times it ain't even worth holding or it might have even been that or you know yeah. so yeah yeah i could um i could speak to that far too well unfortunately <laughs> <laughs> i used to tend to hold a lot of grudges um actually i remember one scenario i remember man it was like me and this dude i used to go to school with and we just stopped speaking and it was all because of a lack of an interaction when we saw each other out of the party and like the lack of interaction for me i carried this for years like years like i don't care what endeavors you got going on it don't mean nothing to me right now because i remember when we was at this spot and i said what's up and you didn't like nah i don't care what you got going and then it's um (laughs) it was bad it was bad and you know, the thing about me when I hold grudges is my grudges also trying to trickle down. So like now, whoever I'm talking to about it is also as riled up as me. Like, yeah, man, we, we done with that. We don't care. <laughs> so that carried on for me and everybody who was around me. Like we were all sitting there with that energy. And just for the fast forward some years later, have a conversation. It's like, man, it's all love. Like, man, look at me like family the whole time. And I'm not sitting here with this beef. That ain't even real. Like, it's only me. I'm holding the grudge. And just like Rodney said, one quick communication all changes. I done been at work and somebody I talk to or say hey to every single day. Uh-huh. And I might be walking or doing whatever and they might have said hey to me and I never seen them or whatever the case may be. I just never seen it. I didn't know because if I knew, it would have been a hey. You know, right? This person mad at me because they felt like I ignored them, but li- but I literally just didn't see them. <laughs> and it's funny, like little situations like that can affect affect us to the point where we have all this negative energy towards a person or a thing holding a grudge mm-hmm. when yeah. we can look at it the other way. Like, I right, for example. Um, we always say like you know view things differently so like if I'm in a car and somebody cut me off then I can be like oh they didn't mean to do that they in a rush or I can be like man he you know <laughs> <laughs> so it's like we, we holding these grudges when we can really view things differently a lot of the times I remember uh, when I was uh, at the very beginning stages of being out and about on my own Man, I had the biggest grudge against my dad, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting back, I'm, I'm catching the bus, and I'm out oh, here yeah. scrambling, and I'm like, you need to be taking me to work. <laughs> you know, and just my attitude was just so, uh, like, I, I had this victim mentality, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, I had that grudge for, I don't know how long, man. But I was just sort of taking that energy and I was just pushing it into like my everyday, you know, going about uh, just 
it's just sort of was like my drive, my motivation, because I felt like, um, you know, he was against me, and you know, you want to see me mm-hmm. fail, mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. yeah, and so forth. And later on down the road, when I got older and got a little bit more mature, I was like, I appreciate that, because I'm like, I really couldn't see what you were doing, mm-hmm. but he was just basically turning me into a, a responsible individual, showing me life in a different way that then I couldn't see because all I could see was you against me is victim mentality Mm -hmm. you know so um yeah and after I let it go I was like I was mad at you for nothing (laughs) (laughs) you bring up a great point because I feel like I didn't even think of this when I thought this topic but a lot of times we have a grudge on our upbringing and a grudge that we might not even realize that we have against our parents. Like, I remember when you didn't give me $20 when I, when I wanted to go to Kings and Men or whatever. You know, like, a lot of times we, have, we, we, we do have a grudge on our childhood or things that took place. And, you know, we call it trauma or whatever. But it's like a lot of times we haven't let this stuff go. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like you get older. I get older now. I can look back like, Oh, she was doing the best she could to raise three kids by herself. Like, I can look at things differently now, but am I still holding that grudge on those things? Am I still walking around every day, still having those same feelings, still reacting to these things the same way? You Mm -hmm. know, so I feel like a lot of times, even after we let the grudge go and Mm -hmm. we're like, okay, I understand. how that happened or how this went down. But why am I still reacting to these things like I'm still hurt by that? It's like an attachment. You know, attached to the feeling of, uh, of it's, it's almost like you're so used to feeling in a certain type of way and you've been, you've been wired that way for so long. Mm-hmm. And then even when you letting go of it, you still, you you trying to, grasp a new perspective on or like let's say new feelings you know towards that person or situation but you still have that same old feeling lingering in the background so it's like you you want to show love and appreciation but yet I still want to be mad at you (laughs) You it's it's like for instance like my dad used to be work when I was a kid my dad used to be working and Mm -hmm. A lot of the times, he, right, say for instance, he supposed to be picking me up, but he wouldn't answer the phone. You know, he could be working or whatever, he wouldn't answer the phone. So, like that used to, to get on my nerves, like just answer the phone and tell me what's what. You know, right, and right. now, still to this day, like I'd have forgiven him for that. I don't even think about that. But still to this day, if somebody don't answer my call, I'm like, I see you all the time when I'm with you on your phone. You can't answer my phone. <laughs> like, you always on your phone. Why you not, you know? Like, but it's like those kind of things. It's like, you, 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 you let, even after you let go of the grudge, mm-hmm. you still react to things the mm-hmm. same way. Because I feel like you're still holding that grudge on the inside. And you're still holding on to these things. You know, and these feelings you had. Yeah. Yeah, um, just to piggyback off of that, and I think what you're saying is um, actually exactly like I think you're saying it perfectly too. It's like the grudge is like the perfect excuse to hold on to that story. So I'm gonna continue mm-hmm. to hold this grudge because as long as I hold this grudge, now this can shape the way that I'm seeing everything that's happening in my life. So it's like it's kind of like what you were saying, Stephen. Like, all right, you know, you don't want to see me be great or whatever. So now I can like. I'm telling myself that this is my fuel to go be great. And it's like, no, I could just be great. Right. Like, I don't have to use this negativity to try and fuel me. Or, and I can like release that negativity because that doesn't have to be me. I don't have to identify as this. Like the grudge is like the perfect excuse to just say, no, nah, I ain't got to fix this because you know, this is the only reason this is happening. Like, because you did that. Mm-hmm. That's a great point because, um, I was having a conversation with friends and I right, so this is it's a it's a NF I'm trying to put it simple but it's an NFL player and in the NFL you have a draft so it's like a bunch of teams picking players or whatever and this guy 
had a had had was out basically out to get anybody that was drafted in front of him, like out to prove that he better than them. And y'all should have took me first. So I, I sent that I sent his quote or whatever what he was saying to you know some friends and I'm like how y'all feel about this mentality and they're like yeah I love that mentality like you know go get them whatever whatever so I asked him I said so after he's done all, I said so for one because the guy specifically had pointed out he specifically pointed out these people I said so what do they have to do with teams picking them before you you know for one and then I'm like all right after he's done all that then what's the fuel you know is that going to be the fuel forever and so basically what i'm saying is like like you were saying that don't have to be our fuel our grudge like hey they was they ain't take me here when i needed a ride or you know right. whatever the case may be so i feel like we don't have to hold on to those things and that shouldn't be what's fueling who we are today yeah I think grudges too, they grudges they place a limitation on your growth, you know, mm, because yes. it's, it's it keeps uh it keeps you stagnant because you 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 used to like I was saying, you used to feel in this way and now you have a choice to feel something better than what you've been feeling, holding this grudge. So do you want to continue to feel the way that you've been feeling or do you want to experience something new and i think a lot of people want to experience something new but now you got to shift from what you know to what you don't know and then you're stepping into something that you don't know which is the unknown so it's like hmm do i really want to <laughs> <laughs> go with what i know yeah yeah I'm, I'm gonna go with stick to what i know and um i think that's for some people i know for myself that was one of the things uh it was a little, uh, it was a task trying to overcome that a little bit. So I feel like um, each incident that you guys described in terms of the reason why you had the grudge, it all boiled down to someone made you feel like you're not enough or you're not worthy or you're not good enough. Um, I, you ain't even worth me speaking to you at the party. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to take you to work because I'm not using my time to take you to work. Um, I'm not going to answer your call. You know, so it's like um, it makes you feel unworthy. Right. So and I don't know if we went down the whole list of everybody who's ever had a grudge. Does it come back to that? But most likely yeah. <laughs> it probably does. And so that's like to me, one of the if not the the biggest human condition is that we don't feel worthy enough. We feel unworthy. Um, and that message has been sent to us most of the times not on purpose like right. nobody was really thinking that you weren't good enough or worthy or whatever but for whatever reason we interpret it as that we feel like uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then somewhere along the way we believe it and um it's almost like when you come in to the world as a child you just feel like the world is yours you know what i'm saying like everybody <laughs> kind of jumps to you <laughs> when you cry they like what's going on you know <laughs> i'm trying to read your mind and <laughs> you know all that but at some point you start getting the message like shut it up <laughs> i ain't got time you know i got time for all that <laughs> or whatever but we in i think steven said it too like it kind of limit we get limited and more limited and more limited in terms of what we feel like we're um what we can do in life um what what um i guess what's possible for us and what we're deserving of and so we all walk around thinking that we deserve way less than what we really deserve and we feel like we have to do something great in order to receive something great. Um, so it, everything gets forced back on, am I doing enough? Am I doing it good enough? Am I doing it, you know, am I smart enough? Am I, you know, savvy enough? Am I um, creative enough? Um, when really we are already all of those things, but it's got smushed along the way. Mm -hmm. And so um, I know the topic is really about grudges, but the backdrop to that, like why you're able to hold that grudge, 
is because it's a reminder. Really, what it should be reminding you is that you're more than who you're pretending to be. Because mm-hmm. whenever you're feeling a negative emotion in your body, that means that you are not in alignment with who you really are. So when you're feeling that emotion, it's like, okay, why am I not in alignment? And it's because who you really are does not see you the way you're now viewing yourself. You're viewing yourself as not enough, as unworthy. Uh, and the bigger part of you know that that's not true. Mm-hmm. So you're out of alignment. I'm over here thinking of all the grudges I had. And looking back, the situation is me feeling like I wasn't important enough or I wasn't worthy of the attention I felt I needed at the time or you know whatever I feel I needed you know I feel like the grudge I was holding was someone else saying like me feeling like someone else is saying you ain't worth it right now mm-hmm. yeah. and then another thing too of mine is so like just picking back a little bit off of what you saying where I mean um, just not feeling worthy enough, you know, um, not knowing that I'm already capable, you know what I'm saying, of <coughs> everything the universe has given me already. So I'm um, not fully understanding my power. So when I was holding those grudges, I didn't have that type of understanding, that perspective of mine, because I was in a victim mentality. Because mm-hmm. I noticed in life, like, when you complain, you put yourself in the victim mentality. So every day when somebody asks me, how you doing? I can't, complain. <laughs> I can't you know. And so um, it, it feels good when you, when you are able to not have that, that mindset, you know, mm-hmm. playing the victim role. Yeah, so um, that's what I agree with that. And you know, there are, all, there are levels of like development or whatever that we can definitely go through. Um, and you know, Stephen talks a lot about self growth, um, self realization, um, just really analyzing and working through things. And you know, like I always say, there's nothing wrong with that. You can definitely go that route. Um, and that's the route that I went, <laughs> you know. Um, but if you can just be in the in the feeling of I'm already worthy right now, like you don't have to go back and, and dig up the past and all that. You can just start feeling into your worthiness, like recognizing that you are connected to the source of all that is. That pulsates through you. You have access to it at any time and at will. And you can call that forth simply by, for me, the easiest way is just to go into a feeling of love. Um, I just literally just fill my body up with love and then when you're in that space you're already there and so the thing is just holding yourself in that space mm-hmm. reminding yourself of that space um, so a lot of times we look out into the world when we look out into the world we move ourselves away from that space because we're judging everything mm-hmm. as wrong everything that's different from us <laughs> right. is wrong we're judging it as wrong um, instead of recognizing that all of that is a part of the same divinity that we are, ourselves are a part of. And so it's like the more that you can recognize your own divinity, um, the truth of who you are, the bigness of you, the wholeness of you, the easier it is to see it everywhere you look out into the world. And so um, I guess in a sense it's like when it comes to holding people at blame, at fault, um, for things that they may have done to quote unquote cross you Mm -hmm. is really it's almost like a misinterpretation of what's going on and sometimes the people may really be doing something on purpose (laughs) you know to hurt you but you can be in a space of being unhurtable Mm -hmm. you can hold yourself in a space of love of unconditional love meaning that no matter what the person is showing up as, how they're showing up, you know who they really are. And then you're able to offer love to that. And you know that if they are doing that, then they're out of alignment. And there's been plenty of times that we've been out of alignment ourselves. And so it's easy to understand that that's what's going on. 
Yeah, um, what you just said brings me back to an ebook that you wrote called I Am More Than That. And when you first wrote it, I didn't get it. But now I get it, like, I'm connected to everything. So I am more than any situation that's happening. Mm -hmm. Like, so I think that's just so powerful with when it talks, when it goes to, I mean, when you think about your being worthy and all of that, like, I am more than anything that's making me feel unworthy, you know. Y'all check out that ebook. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm coming down. laughs> interesting topic about grudges and, and I guess it kind of merged itself into worthiness um, and that's something that we can all feel more worthy. It's, I don't think there's any such thing as um, a person who feels, a person who's on this earth at this time I'm not going to say it never but at this time who feels totally worthy because I would imagine like Jesus Christ mm -hmm. did, maybe Buddha, there may be people who walk the earth but I don't know I'm not gonna say it's no one. It's probably someone, but most of us um, can always feel more worthy. So thank you for joining us this week, and we look forward to chatting with you again next week. So until then, this is Arvette. This is Steven. Come on, Rodney. Bye, y'all. <laughs>